Hello uh, and welcome to the study of uh, epicyclic gear trains. Today we are going to study about the torque, okay, the torque on the epicyclic gear train, all right. So, so start with torque on epicyclic gear train. Uh, now, the net torque applied on the gear train must be zero, okay. So, we, we know that a gear, uh, <coughs> if a gear has to rotate, then there has, there has to be an input power and then there has to be an output power. Then and also there is something known as a fixed gear. Okay, so for this expression, the torque, this is not, the T here is not the number of teeth. Okay, it's the torque on the driver plus torque on the driven plus torque on the fixed gear is equal to zero. So this is the first expression. The second expression is the kinetic energy dissipated by the gear train must be zero. The kinetic energy is on on each gear is nothing but the torque into its speed of the gear torque of the gear into speed of the gear okay? so that that of the driver plus torque into speed of the driven plus torque into speed of the fixed gear is equal to zero the kinetic energy should be zero but we know that when we talk about a fixed gear the speed of the fixed gear is zero hence this expression cancels out and we are left with the with uh, torque into speed product of torque into uh, uh, torque and speed of the driver plus torque and product uh, and uh, speed of the driven is equal to zero so we have expression number one and expression number two so using this we can calculate the uh, torque on the epicyclic gear train so let us see the ex first example so here in an epicyclic gear train the pinion has 15 teeth and is rigidly fixed to the motor shaft okay the wheel b has 20 teeth and gears with a and also with the annular fixed wheel e pinion c has 15 teeth and is integral with the B. That is B and C being a compound gear wheel. C meshes with angular wheel D which is key to the machine shaft. The arm rotates about the same shaft on which A is fixed and carries the compound wheel B. B and C. If the, if the motor runs at 1000 rpm, find the speed of the machine shaft. Find the torque exerted on the machine shaft and the fixed gear. If the motor develops a torque of 100 Newton meter. So this gear over here, uh, this is how the arrangement looks like. Okay? And let me uh, read one more time. In an epicyclic gear train, pinion A has 15 teeth and is rigidly fixed to the motor shaft. Okay, So gear, gear A is fixed to the motor shaft. So whatever is the speed of the gear A is the same of the motor shaft. Okay. Also, uh, you can uh, it is given here. Huh, uh, gear D, annular wheel D, is keyed to the machine shaft. Okay, which is the output shaft. Okay, to the machine shaft. All right. The arm rotates about the uh, uh, same shaft on which A is fixed and carries the compound wheel B C. If the motor runs at 1000 rpm, find the speed of the machine shaft. Okay. When I say find the speed of the machine shaft, means how to find the speed of a D. Okay. Also, this is an extra thing. Find the torque exerted on the machine shaft and the fixed gear. Which is the machine shaft? By which gear is the machine shaft? Okay. Uh, that is the on the gear D and the fixed gear. Which is the fixed gear here? The fixed gear is annular fixed gear wheel E. Okay, so this you have to, you know, by reading the question and understand the question, you need to first under, uh, you have to also understand that which is the driver, okay, and which is the driven and which is the fixed gear, okay, that will make us much easier, alright. Now, to solve this, it is just very similar to how we have solved, the first thing is, see if all the number of teeth are given, if the number of teeth and all the gears are not given, then first calculate that and then put the, uh, go to the tabular method, okay, so for let me, so let us start, so we have this, the gears of A, B, C are given, D and E are not given, but we know that from the sketch, right, by using the sketch, we can know that RD is equal to RA plus RP plus RC, okay, we know that, and hence I can calculate the number of uh, teeth on gear D. Similarly, for gear E, I know that uh, radius of E is nothing but RA plus twice RB, I can, I can substitute that and get the number of teeth on gear E, alright. Uh, then the directly the tabular method, so even this also we know how to put it. Right, the first is the, the arm, okay. Then I then the gear A, then the compound gear BC, then I'll take gear D and then E, okay. And depending upon the whether it is a simple or a compound gear, I'll write the train value of all these things and get the expression. Even this we know we have done it several times, and this several problem also you have solved it, okay. Okay, I'll go ahead 
so they have given that the uh, the gear a rotates at 1000 uh, rpm and gear e is fixed okay this is this is given to us all right uh, so then from the table where is gear a is x plus x plus y and um, speed of e is over here okay so using those two expressions expressions we can write that x plus y is equal to 1000 that is this and then this is the speed of e okay and hence we can calculate the value of x and that also as y all right so we have we got x and y what are we supposed to calculate we are supposed to calculate the speed of the machine shaft okay that means which is nothing but the gear d so i know the expression for gear b for the table and these are all the number of teeth so i'm going to put that and get that speed of gear d is equal to 37.15 rpm okay or the speed of the machine shaft which is nothing but the gear d is 37.15 rpm in the direction of the motor okay so until until here we have even solved it in the previous class how to do that now the extra is the torque portion okay all right we are supposed to talk, uh, calculate uh, the torque of the machine uh, the machine shaft that is on the gear d as well as the torque of the fixed gear that is gear e okay so torque on the machine shaft anyway what is given that when the motor uh, when the when the, when the um, torque applied on the motor is 100 newton meter Uh, motor gear a is is uh, keyed to the motor motor hence the torque on a that is not there is not t number of t but that is torque okay torque on uh, gear a is 100 newton meter okay that is given to us now we know that expression that the kinetic energy dissipated by the gear train must be equal to zero that is the product of torque and number and the speed of the driver plus plus the product of torque and speed of the driven plus the product of torque and speed of the fixed gear is equal to zero but the fixed but so in this case this is a that is the, the, the this is the gear a and this is the gear d and this is gear e now because the fixed gear uh, ne is fixed okay that is equal to zero hence i can reduce this expression so that is nothing but gear a and gear d so i know that the torque on gear a is 100 speed of the gear gear a is 1000 And then uh, speed of gear D is 37.15. Hence, I get the answer. Then the torque on gear D, okay, on a machine shaft is minus 2692 newton meter. The meaning of that is that the torque on a machine shaft is 2692 newton meter in the direction opposite to motor. Because I got this here minus, that means the direction of the motor and the shaft torque are opposite to each other. Okay. So once I go now, now I know the uh, the the shaft the the torque on the gear a and gear t now let us go and calculate on the uh, torque on the fixed gear e okay so again we know that the net torque applied on the gear must be equal to zero so torque on the driver plus torque on the driven plus torque on the fixed is zero which is nothing but the driver is the motor which is the gear a driven is the machine shaft which is gear d and the fixed gear is e okay so I'll substitute the answer and i'll get d is equal to 1690 newton meter the meaning of that is torque on the stationary gear e is 1690 newton meter in the direction of the motor why because this is here positive okay so this is how we calculate the uh, the torque on the driven as well as the torque on the fixed gear by using two expressions okay right, let's we'll see, so see the next problem okay here in the next problem Um, an epicyclic gear train consists of a sun wheel s a stationary internal wheel e and three identical planet wheels p carried on a star shaped um, planet carrier c the size of different two wheels are such that the planet carrier c rotates at 1/5 of the speed of the sun wheel s the minimum number of teeth on any wheel is 16 the driving torque on the sun wheel is newton meter is 100 newton meter determine first number of teeth on different wheels of the train and second the torque necessary to keep the internal gear stationary okay okay so what so what is earth the given is so there is a sun and gear arrangement with the central gear known as sun gear s which has three sp smaller uh, planet gears p and they are connected to a carrier arm c okay arm c also these planet gear drive the inter ring gear or outside gear or internal gear e okay all right so that's what it is and it consists of sun wheel s this is s here and it's stationary internal gear e stationary means what uh, it is fixed okay the speed of this gear is zero and three identical planet gear p okay so these are the three identical gears all right fine 
So the size of the tubes are such a way that the planetary carrier C rotates one fifth the speed of the real sun. Okay, that is the ratio of speed of arm or carrier arm divided by speed of the central gear. Sun gear is one by five. Okay, that is what the minimum number of the teeth of any wheel is sixteen. Okay, so we will assume that the central that the sun gear will have the six number of will be sixteen. Okay, this is an assumption, all right. Or even by looking at the sketch, I can kind of say because it is smaller, I will assume that the number of teeth on the gear sun gear is sixteen, and also the torque on sun is given as hundred newton meter. Okay, all right. So now usually, what's the first step? The first step is to determine the number of teeth on all the gears, right? That's what we usually do. Okay, but so here there are how many gears? There's one sun gear, then identical. Planet gear P and then E. Okay, but the number of teeth is given of only one, right now. Usually, if if we knew the gears of number of teeth of two gears, we would have calculated the other one. But since only one is given, uh, let us skip the uh, part of finding the number of teeth. Let us put the tabular column. Okay, if so, we will put the tabular column. So let you have the first one. You will have the arm. Okay, in this case, it they have taken it as carrier, a carrier. Okay, or star shaped planet carrier. And then the then the sun the sun wheel S and then planet P okay and then internal gear E all right here they have taken planet P as only one okay yeah there are three but then see the ratio is the same right and this way because it's identical uh, gears they they have taken it as only one okay then what did they do then they said fix that fix the arm so zero and give one rotation to sun wheel S so here give one rotation okay uh, here they have mentioned Uh, one re revolution anti clockwise okay that is taken in the textbook you neglect that you neglect that anti clockwise let us assume that this one rotation is clockwise only okay so this is clockwise hence it is positive okay one right so next for uh, what is the train value here so gear s drives gear uh, p hence it is minus ts by tp we know that okay next gear s drives c that drives e Okay, so again it's a simple gear train, so its train value is also minus T S by T E. Okay, we know this, right? And then you multiply by x, you add y, you get the expression. Okay, we all right. Okay, next. Next, they have given that the ratio of the speed of arm or carrier divided by the uh, to that of the speed of the sun gear is one by five. That is, S makes five rotation for every one rotation of the arm or. Okay, that is. That is, um, the speed of the gear C is one, and uh, speed of the sun gear is five. Okay, that is from the table y is equal to one and x plus y is equal to five, or x is equal to four. Okay, fine. So now let us find the uh, teeth on the gears. Since the internal gear E is stationary, we can use this expression from the table and substitute the value and get the number of teeth on gear E, which is sixty-four. Okay. Then again, from the sketch, we know that. The radius of the gear E is equal to radius of the sun plus twice the radius of uh, the planet gear. Substituting those values, I can get the number of teeth on the planet gear P also. Okay, fine. Then the torque necessary to keep the internal gear stationary. We have to uh, suppose to calculate this. So we know that the expression, uh, what is given, torque on sun wheel is given as 100 newton meter. This is given to us right now. Now the kinetic energy dissipated by the sun gear. Must be equal to zero. So this expression must be equal to zero. So here the driver is the sun, driven is the carrier arm C, and the fixed gear is E. Okay, because the fixed gear is speed is zero, we can get this expression, and we know the torque of sun and speed of sun, and we need the speed of the carrier, which is one. Okay, we don't know the torque on C, but substituting here we can get the torque of C as minus. 500 newton meter, which is nothing but the torque on the carrier C is 500 newton meter in the direction opposite to that of the gear S. Why? Because this value is negative. Once you get this, then by substituting the net torque equation, that is uh, the uh, the torque on sun, torque on uh, carrier plus torque on the fixed gear E is equal to zero. Okay, by substituting, I can get the torque on Gear E is 400 newton meter. Now, because it is positive here, the torque on the stationary gear E is 400 newton meter in the direction of the gear S. Okay. So, go through these problems uh, one more time. Okay, and you will you will understand uh, better. All right. I'll see you in the next class.